Welcome to Can You Believe It? At Can You Believe It? We believe that all truth is God's truth. And uh, our responsibility is to find that truth and share it with the rest of the world. Now, when it comes to parenting, you know you're getting it right when you start singing your children's favorite songs, especially in the car. You know you're into it when you just can't stop singing, Baby Shark, Baby Shark. Well, one of my favorite uh, children rhymes is Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty is one of those rhymes that is generally ignored by adults because when you keenly listen to it, its message sounds like sheer nonsense and does not seem to make sense at all. This is how it goes. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. What? King's horses? How and uh, why put him back together again? Well, poor Humpty lay down there with broken pieces at the base of a brick wall with no one able to put him back together again. Have you ever wondered who was Humpty Dumpty? See, the scripture reads in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 24, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Not long ago, somebody said this to me. Somebody suggested that we live in a Humpty Dumpty kind of a world. That is, Humpty Dumpty is severely broken, and the common assumption is somehow putting Humpty Dumpty back together again is an impossible task. Life and relationships and situations are broken and they cannot be fixed. Some hold to the philosophy that humanity is broken and cannot be fixed. We all have a stain that cannot be removed. We are damaged goods. If you believe in, ex in philosophy or what we call existential philosophy, which branches from postmodernism, Extension philosophy states that there is no purpose to love and that there is no God and that life is meaningless. The champions of extension philosophy are people like Paul Sert, uh, Albert Camus, Simone de Beauvoir from France, Michael Foucault, Jackie Darida, and Martin Heidegger, amongst others. Extension philosophy states that humans exist for a while just to be surprised by death. Humanity groans that it waits to die and therefore we must make the best out of what we got. Man is on his own and therefore we must take responsibility to fix him ourselves doing the most we can while we wait to die. That's existentialism at its best. According to existential philosophy, nothing can be done to rescue humanity from our misery and from our brokenness. There is pain everywhere we look, but there is no hope. We have fallen and no one can put us back together again. Basically, Humpty Dumpty is broken and no one can fix him. Look around and you see disunity and racial tensions everywhere. Fighting amongst brothers and sisters. Pride and greed is on the rise. Humans will probably never be able to put back us together again, despite the best efforts by the king's hosemen and king's hoses. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. What a perceptive parable and a reality of our current generation. Is there hope?
for humanity. We live in a society where everything as we know it, where all of that has been strongly nailed down is now being uprooted by secularism. Our good old American culture or human culture, our morals, our traditions, and our foundational principles have been shaken down. Families have been dis disintegrated. And today's children are growing to be teenagers without ever being told, I love you, or experiencing love within the families, or being told of boundaries which are essential for their growing. Most college professors today in our universities present truth as a relative entity. My truth, your truth, it's all relative. And therefore, no one should impose their truth on the other. Try that in the banking industry, by the way. And let's see how it's going to fly. I mean, you could end up in argue, arguing that I deposited $20,000 and that's my truth. Well, the banker will tell you, no, you only deposited $2,000 and that's my truth. See how that's going to go. Uh, Short-lived dream if you go to the bank. Or try even this uh, truth is relative in engineering or aerodynamics and see if your plane is going to hold up in the sky or your boat stay afloat. Marriages are breaking apart and right because no one wants to stay committed or, or face the reality that a family must agree on all areas of life if it will survive. Today, marriages are perceived as contracts that last as long as there are feelings. Always ready to jump ship in disappointment and irreconcilable differences are experienced. Who does not have irreconcilable differences with the other? Today, we have what we call open relationships and open marriages. What does that even mean? The late Ravi Zachariah, who would probably be considered an apologist, wrote, and I want to quote Ravi Zacharias from his book, Jesus Among Other Gods. This is what Ravi writes, I quote, These days it's not just that the line between right and wrong has been made unclear. Today, Christians are being asked by our culture to erase the lines and move the fences. And if that were not bad enough, we are being asked to join in the celebration cry by those who have thrown off the restraints religion has imposed upon them. It is not just that they are asking as we accept, but they are now demanding of us to celebrate their demands too. End of quote. Who would disagree with that statement? Probably none of us. But we on the other side do not want to confront anyone because we are afraid of losing church funding and essential relationships. We are living in a time when sensitivities are at the surface. Philosophically, you can believe anything as long as you don't claim it's a better way. Religiously, you can hold to anything so long as you do not bring Jesus into it. If a spiritual idea originates from the Oriental or Eastern world, it is granted critical immunity. If a spiritual idea originates from the Western world or is associated with Christianity, it is thoroughly criticized. For example, a journalist can walk into a, a church and mock the cross, but the same journalist dare not do the same if the ceremony is from the Eastern world. Basically, we are crushing reason and rationalism at our feet in the expense of feelings. Humpty Dumpty has fallen and the king's horsemen cannot put him together again. You cannot build a marble temple out of a mixture of mud and manure, said Eugene O'Neill. Humpty Dumpty has fallen and the king's horsemen cannot put him together again. But we continue to try. We're searching for the truth and 
for a reason to exist. We're searching for God and for the senses of the moral law that is within us. We're searching for peace. We continue to search for meaningful relationships, but this eludes us. We have men who want to be women and women who want to be men. Not long ago, Glamour Magazine named a man changed to a woman by the name of Caitlyn Jenner as the most beautiful woman of the year. Go figure that out. I mean, women should be so mad that a man is claiming titles and credits for being a woman. Somebody should be able to tell Jenna that 30 minutes under the knife of a doctor does not make one a woman, nor does a nose job or wearing high heels or even the size of your wallet make somebody a woman. Bruce Jenna is still a man at the end of the day. Where is the glue to reassemble this disintegration, disarray that we are seeing in our culture today? It was the African scholar and theologian by the name of Augustine of Ipo who said, I quote, Great are you, O Lord, and exceedingly worthy of praise. Your power is eminence and your wisdom beyond reckoning. And so we men who are a due part of your creation long to praise you. We also carry our mortality about with us. We carry the evidence of our sin and with it the proof that you oppose the proud. You arouse us so that praising you may bring us joy because you have made us for yourself, O oh Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in you. End of quote. Saint Augustine of Hippo. Today, the philosophy of secular humanism is insanely committed to the proposition that man has all the answers and that he can do it all on his own. It was Button Rousseau, that philosopher from Great Britain. I studied uh, Bertrand Rousseau in my first dissertation. And uh, Bertrand Rousseau wrote the book, Why I'm Not a Christian. If I, I'd met Bertrand Rousseau, tell him you did a poor job in that book. But here's what Bertrand Rousseau taught at the University of California in New York in the uh, 1960s. He proclaimed that men is the measure of all things. And so is secular humanism. I want to disagree with Bertrand Rousseau and all other philosophers who argue and secular humanism basically that says man is a measure of all things. Humpty Dumpty is broken in every possible way and he cannot fix himself. We are building sand castles only to discover that the tides of reality are washing the castles out to sea. This is what happens immediately afterwards. We immediately begin to seek someone to blame when we get to that level. Not long ago, I saw an intriguing piece of graffiti on a wall in the city of Chicago. Scratched across the wall were these words. Humpty Dumpty was pushed. <laughs> the oldest trick in the book. God, it's Eve who you gave to me. It's the woman whom you put here in this garden. When confronted, Eve said, nah, it's not me, it's the serpent. You see, that's our specialty. Blame shifting and making excuses, excuses, and excuses. It was not my fault. It was not me. It was him. He pushed me too far. He had it coming, Lord. And a plethora of other excuses we scheme and develop. But this is not so with our Lord Jesus Christ. His promises are true. He can fix Humpty Dumpty in his brokenness. This is the reason that Jesus had to die, to restore the relationship between man and God. Jesus died to fix broken Humpty Dumpty. And here's the truth of the matter. God knows that Humpty Dumpty is broken. And for that reason, Jesus died to rescue us from our brokenness. 
Apostle Paul writing in Romans chapter 3, verses 23, understood this very clearly when he writes, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You see, only Jesus can fix Humpty Dumpty in his brokenness. Listen to the words of prophet Isaiah in the 61st chapter of his book. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news or goodness to the oppressed, to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and to release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. End of quote. To provide for those who mourn, to give us gladness instead of gloom, to give us the strength to praise God when our spirits are faint, when we experience him and meet him with, uh, with all his beauty, he makes us bold and strong like the mighty ox or the sequoia trees. You see, we display God's glory when we allow Jesus to rebuild Humpty Dumpty, just as he is. When we allow Jesus to rebuild us, we have a chance to raise up from our failures and from our loneliness and from our misery and from our painful circumstances and situations. Jesus can repair our ruins and restore us from our devastations and our selfishness. He can restore us. Yes, only God can be able to say, I can fix broken humanity. He's able. God can restore and God can replenish. God can rebuild that which has been broken. God can mend our brokenness. God can fix Humpty Dumpty from his brokenness and from his hopelessness. So what's your brokenness this day? He can restore Humpty Dumpty from his fall, you know. He can restore you and me at this very minute. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. Probably not a subject you thought you wanted to hear from can you believe it? But yes, God can restore the Humpty Dumpties of the world. Sure, Humpty Dumpty lived a good life, I believe. Sitting high up there and looking down at the downfall or the town's gentlemen and women as they went by. But one day he sat up on top of his hill and top of his wall. But something happened. He fell from his wall of materialism and stuff and chasing after this and that, chasing after the dollar, maybe even after the shilling. Maybe Humpty Dumpty's wife became so angry at him and he tried to scramble him up. Perhaps he had upset his neighbor with a bad attitude of, I am better than everyone else. Or maybe his dog lay a big boo-boo on his neighbor's fence. Maybe he had just received an uh, astronomical bill that had caused him to split his yolk. Maybe he found out his son had gambled all his inheritance and became so hungry, he popped like an overboiled egg. Maybe he lost his job and it caused him to tumble. Maybe his son had joined a gang and it broke him up. Maybe he got cracked up because he was strung up on crack. Maybe he drank so much tequila that he could not stand up straight. I don't know. But it was the Lord that came to rescue him, to tell him, I care for you. I can fix you. You see, God cares for all Humpty Dumpties of the world, and he wants to fix them up. All he cares about Humpty Dumpty is that he turns around and comes to know him personally. Jesus cares so much that he died on the cross for all of us. We all have been, have been have dropped an egg at one time or another. We have, each of us, been splattered and we've all seen splatters and shatters. We've gone through some tough times. Imagine the king and all his horsemen's attitude when they saw this mess before them. 
a shell in millions of pieces. They cannot fix it. They cannot fix him. No one can fix Humpty Dumpty, you see. Not even all of his self-help books put together. Not one can fix the broken pieces of our lives. But Jesus, that's why he died. Humpty Dumpty dipped, dripped, and fell down, flat on his face. The king and his footmen gave up and left Humpty Dumpty in a heap of big mess. The psychologists have tried to help. Self-help gurus have tried, but still no hope. How many times have we fallen down like Humpty Dumpty? Looking to anyone and everyone to help us out. Humpty Dumpty may have tried to pay the king X amount of uh, dollars, thinking that he would tithe his way into wholeness. Humpty Dumpty might have called on the pastor thinking, Having the right connections with the right people would make him war. Humpty Dumpty might have told the preacher to put his name on the church's register, thinking that just by being a member may make him complete. Humpty Dumpty may have used a quick fix, unaware that it was only temporary. There is no quick fixes with Jesus. Humpty Dumpty might have gone to college and obtained an MBA and a PhD thinking that his degrees would make him total. Humpty Dumpty might have been boastful, thinking that an image of largeness and of owing stuff would make him absolute. Humpty Dumpty might have done a lot of things, but it is apparent that in all of this, or his getting, he didn't get an understanding of who was the right king to petition to in times of, of trouble. Humpty Dumpty didn't grasp the concept that the kingdom in which he resided was only temporary, but the true kingdom of the absolute king is everlasting. Oh, poor Humpty Dumpty called on many, but none were able to put him back together again. His degrees were useless. His church membership was baseless. His giving was fruitless. His prestige was pointless because Humpty Dumpty didn't know the true king. Prophet Isaiah again in Isaiah cried out, Woe unto me, for I am ruined. Woe unto me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst men of unclean lips. Isaiah was confident that God didn't need any hoses or any large group of men to put his life together again. You see, we are all like Humpty Dumpty. And the only way we can get put back together again is to allow the king of kings, the real king to do the mending, the king that died for us, the king that died to mend us and to transform us into his image. Some of the walls we sit on are high, higher than some, and some of us are more clumsy than others. And maybe we tend to fall more frequent than others. That's okay. Well, that is the nature of humanity. But here's the fact of the matter. We can be all the same, even though we are created by the same creator. But the bottom line is this. Those who believe in the true king get put together again, no matter who broke or shattered or how shattered and broken you are. You see, it doesn't matter how large your fracture is or how small your fall is. A fall is a fall. The fact of the matter is that God has got the best super glue on the market, and that is none other than the blood of Jesus. The blood that makes us new again. The blood that makes us whole again and washes white as snow. The blood of Jesus washes away the mess and the stain and the scratches that occur in our falls. His blood washes them clean. It leaves no marks and no scars. The blood of Jesus fills the crevices of our broken shell and replenishes our inner being while we have lost some of our substance. But praise God for that. The blood of Jesus is the rectifier and the fortifier. Amen. It sustains and maintains. It corrects and it amends. A potent solidifier that reconciles, we can say. But here's a requirement. We have to have a personal relationship with the king and we have to possess a personal knowledge of the king to be able to receive this magnificent fixing from the king. 
will have some scrubbles and uh, stumbles and some tumbles here and there. And we may even get bruised up and battered by our enemy. We might even have a few scratches and a, a few band-aids here and there. Health issues, pain, uh, sufferings here and there, financial difficulties, wars here and there, family scrumbles here and there, personal issues and character issues here and there, job losses and frustrations of life here and there. But our foes don't have to be fatal because of God's power and God's superglue. When we become battered, we shout out loud, I know the blood of Jesus can fix me. When we become dismayed, we can sing, I know it was the blood. When we become lonely, we can be able to call on our Lord. I know, Lord, you are there in my loneliness and my desperateness, in my pain and in my loss. You were there in my pain. You were there in my depression. You were there when my husband was acting all stupid and crazy and my wife was all selfish and greedy. Lord, you were there when the Egyptians were trying to enslave me and to take the best of me. You were there, Lord, when my job mates were discriminating against me, calling me names and looking at me as if I was from outer space, judging me and not loving me. Lord, you were there when I was all alone. And when I felt like a stranger, you were there when I lost my mother, when I lost my father. You were there when I lost my wife. You were there when I lost my brother or my sister. You were there when my children were lost and going in the wrong direction. Lord, you were there in my midlife crisis when I did not care or I, when I did whatever my mind wanted to do. I know it was the blood and the power of God that provided me. On that sacred cross, on Calvary, Jesus cried, it's finished. His blood gives us strength for day to day, and his blood will never, ever lose its power. Lord, you are there. How do I know? Well, it reaches the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. This blood gives us strength from day to day. Oh, in the midnight hour, when your heart is heavy, the blood soothes your doubt and calms your fears and it dries all your tears. The blood gives us strength from day to day and it will never, never lose its power. For all are fallen short of the glory of God. God has sent us his son to reconcile us to him. So we have hope. Please allow me to close with this verse in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not by works so that any of us may boast. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's men and all the hoses of the king could not put him together again. 